Hey there, hope you're having a great week so far and welcome to my UV Chef uh, video tutorials to go through and show you how to present uh, the dishes. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, all nine dishes that we've, that we've done um, for this week, including the bread as well, which we haven't done before. Um, so starting off, um, the bread this week is this lovely focaccia. Uh, so this is our house uh, focaccia here. Uh, so take it out of the box that it comes with and we've sent you with a um, nice sheet of foil in there so you can bake it actually in the foil and that will stop it from drying out. So important here, make sure it's completely sealed. There we go, fold it up nicely, nice little parcel and then that wants to go on a tray uh, in the oven for eight minutes. So here we go. And then what I've sent as well is this lovely rapeseed oil jam. So yeah, jam. I hear you say, but this is absolutely delicious. So um, this is just rapeseed oil, which I've infused with rosemary. And then we blitz it at very, very high power with, uh, with some uh, secret ingredients. You end up with this delicious uh, like jam-like texture. So what we're gonna do with that, we're just gonna stir it down. So bring it up to room temperature, and then it will kind of relax a little bit, and it will be lovely, so you can just dip that for capture into it. So. We'll be back in eight minutes or so and I'll just show you plating up my bread. So I'm just going to grab that capture out of the oven now. So be careful about the tray, it's really, really hot. So just carefully take the foil off, like so. I like to add a little bit of extra oil to mine so you can have rapes or, or olive oil, completely up to you. It's already seasoned, but if you like to add a little bit extra salt again, more than salt's just lovely little flaky salt just on the top of there. And then just, let's serve that with our rapeseed oil jam, just on the side. And then the capture, so you can just take that to the table and everyone can just tear into that and dip it into the rapeseed oil jam. First starter for you is a ravioli smoked partridge. Uh, so this is local partridge in here and chicken. So I made chicken mousse diced partridge in there in saffron pasta. Uh, to go with that we've got some salsa feet, uh, which has just been braised and then charred on the outside. And there's some lovely confit garlic in there as well, which is yeah, really nice just to squeeze over the dish at the end. Uh, we've got a little bit of crispy rosemary just to go on the top so people can string that off and eat it with it. And then we've got a little rosemary butter sauce on there as well. So the ravioli, make sure you've got a pan of water on. Um, you want it boiling, but take your ravioli very carefully and then just lower it in. There we go. I'm just gonna put my timer on. So eight minutes that's going on for. And what you wanna do is just bring it back to the boil and then turn that down then. So it just wants to be simmering, not boiling too fast because otherwise the pasta will bend damage. So that's gonna go for about eight minutes. And the salsa feed, that's gonna take about five minutes in the oven. So obviously do the maths once that's been on, this goes into the oven. Same as the rosemary, a little bit of a flash just at the end just to warm it up. And I'm just gonna get my sauce warming up as well. So we'll, we'll be back in about seven minutes from now ready to plate up our ravioli. So my ravioli's been on for about eight minutes now. So I'm just gonna use a spider, very, very carefully get that ravioli. Take a pan which you've warmed up, a touch of butter or oil in, and just carefully put that ravioli in. And Grab your rosemary sauce, which you've got. My uh, bowl's already heated up here, just a nice warm bowl. And then take a little of your rosemary sauce and just dress a touch of that over the pasta. Really, really important that because it's going to flavour up the outside of the pasta. And then a tiny bit of seasoning on there as well, a little bit of salt, and just give it a little baste. Beautiful. Then I'm going to grab my salsa for out. That's just been in five minutes or so. And then let's get our rosemary out as well. Just turn our water off. So then the way I plate this one is take your ravioli, just as you spoon it onto the dish, just let it drain so you don't get all of that sort of uh, draining pasta water from the bowl. And just plate that straight into the centre. Then our rosemary and salsa feet, let's just plate that around, so a few nice pieces of that, showing some of that very nice colour where we've charred it for you. 
and then I'll take some of those little garlic cloves. So these have just been compied very slowly. And what you can do, you can just peel the skin back almost, and then you can just eat away, and that, that lovely um, garlic clove, which where it's been compied, it's not as uh, powerful. Uh, the garlic has got really lovely, lovely flavour from it. So just rest a few of those garlic cloves on there like so. Just open that one up again. Beautiful. And then what we'll do is take some more of our lovely butter sauce and we're just gonna do the chef thing and just baste it nicely around like so. And then take a piece of your rosemary. This is designed so you can turn it to the table like so. And then just string that rosemary off and then dive in. Hope you enjoy it. Next up is this beautiful salmon, uh, cured in brown sugar, molten salt. Uh, it's got lemon in there and it's finished with dill on the top. Uh, serving that with a spiced apple crumpet. Uh, so what you want to do is take your crumpet out. Uh, made these ones a little bit wider as well so you can get obviously lots more salmon on the top. Um, take your crumpet in the oven four minutes. So that's just to warm it up or you can put it under the grill if you, if you uh, prefer. Um, and then for your salad, um, we've got some lovely watercress, lovely peppery. Um, you've got a little compressed apple here, so just cut open your apple and then you see you've got these nice individual slices, always makes it go translucent when we compress it. So put your apple in there, and then you've got an apple dressing, give it a nice stir, and then pour a little bit of that dressing over your watercress and just just give it a nice little mix and that's going to coat and flavor all that lovely watercress there we go so then we've got to go with we've got horseradish cream and um, this is just lightly whipped cream just a touch of horseradish in there and i'm going to plate that on the top of um on the top of my crumpet so a few more minutes on my uh, crumpet and then i'll show you how to finish this dish off so just grab in my crumpet out of the oven, there you go. Lovely, all nice and uh, heated up. Be careful of a tray, get anything out of the oven. Okay, then what we're gonna do, tiny bit of dressing. Again, just on the top of that crumpet. We've got all those lovely holes, as we know crumpets have, that's gonna sort of suck in all of that dressing. Then I'm gonna take my watercress, and I'm going to create like a nice sort of uh, even bed to sit my cured salmon on. So go with your nice apple slices, more watercress, like so. And just arrange it, then you can get some nice height on it, which is really, really important. A bit more apple on the top, and then. Go to your salmon, you see then I'm gonna just nicely put all my pieces of salmon. I'm just gonna curl some, place some over the top. And the salmon as well, important, I've left that out at room temperature just to warm up. Um, again, fridge cold, you're not gonna taste everything that's in there. But like this you'll taste all those lovely spices but go through the crumpet and that lovely fresh dill and the citrus on that the salmon's been cured with so like so so there we go and then go back to your cream what i'm going to do with my cream i've just got a hot spoon and i'm just gonna mold a nice little Granel of that on the top. Beautiful. Then take a fish slice onto your serving plate and then back for more dressing. So again, give it a stir in case it's separated and a little bit dressed into the actual crumpet itself. And then, of course, some. 
around the outside. And there you have a fantastic starter, cured salmon, spiced apple crumpet, and a little salad of watercress and apple. Hope you enjoy it. Final starter of this week is this silky smooth Drew's Master Choke Velute. Uh, so it's bang on seasonal, really, really autumnal flavours here. Uh, so I'm going to get that on to heat up. Um, just on the edge of the stove, make sure it doesn't catch on a pan. And then we've made this uh, lovely brioche to go with this. This is a caramelised shallot and thyme uh, brioche. Uh, so we've rolled the brioche out, put the caramelised thyme over it, rolled it up like a Swiss roll. So you've got one of those. That needs to go in the oven for about eight minutes or so, just to heat up. So that's one gone in. And then when we come back, we'll be garnishing this with uh, chopped chives, a little parmesan infused oil here as well. And of course, some uh, little parmesan shavings just to go on the top. So we'll be back in a second. So just bringing over my artichoke soup here, all nice and hot. Let's get our bowl out of the oven. That's all heated up, ready to go. And then there's our brioche there as well. So nice and careful on the hot tray again. Then what we'll do, the artichoke soup is hot. I don't like to serve it boiling because then it's too hot, you can't taste the nice flavours. So let's plate our bowl of soup in the centre. So then what we're going to do is, just before, get our brioche. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, rapeseed oil just to the top, just to glaze it up. There we go. Optional, you don't have to do that, I just like it to have a really nice shine on the top. And then as well, I'm going to put a touch of seasoning on there. And then either take a straight knife or a nice sharp knife and just, just cut down so that you can open that up. There we go. And we're just going to present that up on our board. And then going back to our chives, take a nice spoon of the chives and just tap those all over and then take your parmesan shavings and you can just place them in the top and what they'll do they'll start to melt and then when you go in the spoon they're all nice and gooey and all kind of nice and melted so add the parmesan in and then we're just going to come up and finish that off with our parmesan oil i make the parmesan oil by getting the, the rind of the parmesan every time we've we've sort of used it uh, or the actual parmesan for grating, uh, we'll take the rind and then we'll sous it, we'll vacuum pack it with a uh, nice rapeseed oil um, and then we'll cook it overnight um, and then you end up with this beautiful infused parmesan oil. So just finishing off quite a bit of that on the top and there you go. Really really seasonal soup for you there, Jerusalem last choke with a thyme and shallot baked brioche. Really nice main course here for you. Uh, this is a valentine of uh, lemon sole. Uh, so lemon sole completely taken off the bone and then it's been layered up with a shellfish mousse, uh, salmon base in there, and then we've got tiger prawns going through it. Um, so that's all ready to cook. Um, I've been serving this this week with a gnocchi. Uh, so this is a cuttlefish ink gnocchi. Uh, I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of water in there, sort of like two tablespoons of water. It's already got butter and herbs in there. About 15 minutes in the oven for that one. There we go. And then the Ballantine, that's going to take between eight and 10 minutes. So I've got a pan of water just uh, boiling away behind me here. So I'm going to place that into my boiling water. Then I'm going to put a lid back on the top. Um, and then we're just going to turn the heat right down. You want it just simmering, not boiling away. Um, and that wants to be in, as I say, eight to 10 minutes uh, until it's uh, hot in the center. Uh, and then we've got roasted gem lettuce. This is just going to go in the oven for again about uh, eight to ten minutes just to heat up. Um, cuttlefish cracker, so this is just made with tapioca. Um, that needs a flash in the oven for three to four minutes just to, just so it's nice and crispy. Um, and then I've got a gem lettuce sauce. So the gem lettuce sauce is just going to be heated up. Uh, again, don't boil it, just a scolding point, uh, and then we'll be all ready to plate up. So um, Noki's cooking away. Uh, I'm going to give that. Or sort of five or so minutes and then put my uh, Valentine in 
and I'll come back and I'll show you uh, show you finishing off the balancing cooking. So my balancing's been cooking about nine minutes now. So I'm just going to turn that off. And I'll bring it over here to show you. So just take a little spider or fish slice and just carefully lift it out, allow it to drain off the water so it doesn't uh, burn as you try and cut it. Then I've got a pan already here, I've got my generator sauce heated up, really important to have that all ready to go. I'm just going to put a spoon of that in my uh, warmed up pan ready to go and then I'm going to put the rest just back on the heat, ready to finish off the dish shortly. And what we're going to do, take a pair of scissors and just snip the end off of your balance heat, like so, and then just carefully lift it into the pan and then just pull that clean film off, like so. Okay, so there you've got your balancing. Let's put it back on the heat briefly. I'm just almost going to baste it with that sauce now, a little clean down. Then let's grab our plate out. So that's all hot, ready to go. And here we go. Jim lettuce, cuttlefish cracker, and of course our gnocchi. I'm going to take a spoon, go and baste my cannelloni. Sauce is all hot once again. You see, I'll just take a spoon and baste that gem lettuce over the top of your cannelloni, or Valentina sole, like so. So remember you've got the shellfish mousse in there, you've got the lemon sole, and then what I'm going to do is just take a fish slice and be really, really careful at this stage because it will be very delicate. So you see I'm just going to lift that, give it a little drain, and then lift the whole thing onto my plate like so. There we go. Okay, so that's very, very delicate as I say. Be, be quite careful with that. Then what we'll do, go back, get our gem lettuce, lay that at the side, the gnocchi, just be careful of that hot dish there, and place those lovely uh, cuttlefish in. Just give them a little baste as you, as you uh, go, that butter that we've cooked them in, and the, and the water will have kind of all turned into an emulsion with the chopped parsley that's in there, so a few of those gnocchi on there, like so. And then we will add a touch more sauce. So this is gem lettuce sauce again, just going over the top of the Valentina sole. More sauce around the outside. Beautiful. And then let's finish it off with our cracker. So you can just snap that and you can see how that's lovely crisped up in the oven now. And just get some really nice height with it. Few nice pieces just sitting on top of the balancing. And you'll hear it's like rice krispies, it starts to kind of crackle as it as it touches any of that moisture. Finish a little bit of rape soil just to split that sauce out. Like so. And there you go. Fantastic real celebration dish that balancing lemon sole, shellfish mousse, roasted lettuce and a lovely cuttlefish noggin. Next main course for you here is a rump of lamb, it's been barbecued. Uh, this is gonna go in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, 15 minutes if you like it pink, if you want it well done, you wanna be looking about 25, 30 minutes. So, let's get our lamb rump in. Um, and then with it, I've got a hot pot uh, this week, so this is uh, or my take on hot pot. This is layered potato with braised lamb shoulder, uh, which we've uh, really, like cooked really, really slowly. And then we've pressed it, and then we've cut this lovely little tureen out of it, and I've just coloured it off you. That's gonna go in the oven about eight to 10 minutes to heat up, not too long at all. Uh, then we've got fettuccine and vegetables. So in here I've got some carrot, mouli, uh, I've got celery in there as well. Um, then we've got lamb sauce, and we've got a squash puree. So squash puree, lamb sauce are going to go onto the heat just as you would normally just to heat them up prior to serving. Um, once the lamb, uh, the rump of lamb is uh, sort of 10 minutes away, we'll get our pressing in and the fettuccine of vegetables, uh, I'll show you that just before we plate up. So not far off plating up now, so touch of oil, 
just in my pan, heat heats up the saute pan, and then add my vegetables in, and add a tiny touch, about two tablespoons, just the water or stock if you prefer. Back on the heat with that, just at the edge, and make sure you put a lid just on the top, give it a shake, and put it to the side. Then plate, make sure you get your plates in the oven for the lamb, and then I'm going to pull my lamb out, there we go. So at this stage, um, you can absolutely finish it off like that. Uh, but what I like to do is take a non-stick pan. Again, I'll just bring it over to show you. And just take the lamb, you see where you've got the fat side, into the oven, sorry, into the pan. Um, no oil in there. And this is where you want to crispen that fat side. So just get that back onto the stove. And as, as it's on the stove, we're going to keep turning it. Uh, and this is just to seal it off last second, because the lamb really, really benefits. Uh, from that lovely caramelisation at the last at the last stage. So, a couple more minutes, and we we'll be turning my lamb, and then I'll bring it over, and we'll be ready to plate up. So here's my lamb, all sealed off now. Beautiful, absolutely lovely smell coming off. That's from where we barbecued it previously. For you. So, lamb's all sealed. Let it rest a good couple of minutes before you cut it. So in that time, go and take my fettuccine vegetables, and also my lamb sauce. I've got my heated plate. I've got my squash puree, and then with that fettuccine, you want to give it a little taste, check you're happy with the seasoning, um, and then adjust if necessary. Put that on the side, and then with your lamb shoulder, so your hot pot, take a pair of scissors and just cut the little film from around the outside, because that keeps it together during the cooking process. Okay, so. That raised plate here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my lamb sauce onto the top of your hot pot like so. And that's gonna glaze it up. And then we'll just add that to our plate. There we go. Move that tray away. Put the lamb ready on the board for slicing. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my squash puree. So I'm just gonna take one nice spoon of that just at the top. There we go. I'm gonna take some of my fettuccine veg. I'm just gonna, you can use your pasta fork if you prefer. I'm just gonna onto the plate. See how I've drained it nicely so you've not got lots of cooking juices coming out. Nice little pile of that. And then your lamb, look out for the grain of the meat. Um, so then the grain of the meat goes this way, you want to slice it across the grain, and that makes it even more tender. So just turn it over, skin side down, and then take some really nice slices off of there. Be really, really careful of that sharp knife which you need. So, that's so another slice there. And what I'm going to do is put my two slices on the bottom. I'm going to take a little bit of molten salt. So just season in between the layers, really important. And then just get your lamb, arrange that on the top, and then we're going to sit that nicely on our vegetables. Like so, quick rinse. There we go. And then Finish a little bit more lamb sauce, plenty on that hot pot. And then, there we go. Lovely roasted lamb sauce, which you finish with red wine, touch of rosemary in there. And there you have my barbecue rump of lamb, fettuccine of vegetables, hot pot, squash puree, and lamb sauce. So my last main course, uh, risotto, beetroot, um, and goat's way as well. So um, how we're gonna start off plating this dish, uh, we've got our roasted beetroots here. Uh, so in here you've got candy, golden, and just an all red beetroot as well. They've been salt baked. They're gonna go in the oven, just put it back through, about five to eight minutes, not too long for them. And then with your risotto, so what you've got um, in your packet, you've got your beetroot cooked risotto rice, so lovely pink rice. This has got the uh, ground pandano, 
in there and it's got some butter as well. So get all of that into your pan. Yeah, a little bit unusual for how you normally finish risotto, but take your cooking liquor, which I've sent you. Um, this has got the beetroot juice in and it's got the goat's waste. So when they make the goat's cheese, they hang it up and what comes out the bottom is this beautiful liquid, that's the whey. So all of the whey goes in and then you want to get that on the heat. So like a medium heat. There we go. And make sure you've got a spatula, a spoon ready to go. And bring that back to the heat, the butter will melt in there. It's going to take about two minutes once it comes back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the boil. Uh, and then turn the heat down and just sort of simmer it. You don't want it to slip into the pan. And then to serve with it, I've got this lovely fennel seed cracker. So this is just roll through the pasta machine. I've also got some pickled fennel. Um, and a little, that comes in the pot with a little uh, fennel press as well, which we're just going to dress through at the last second. So I'll just bring that back together. And then two minutes, two, three minutes, we'll be ready to plate up. So my risotto is about ready to go. Let's pull our beetroots out of the oven. We've got our warmed up plate there. So the beetroots, just be careful of that container. We've got our fennel. So I'm just gonna come back to my risotto. So it's just been on that medium heat now for two to three minutes. If you like your risotto a little bit wetter, just add a touch of water to it. Go. Let's have a taste just to check our seasoning before we serve it. Yeah. Mm. That way you can give it a little bit of a saltiness, so make sure you taste before you before you add any extra seasoning. So get rid of our spatula. Nice stir. Uh, it's lovely and creamy. And that's where I Send you a cooking liquor which has um, been used to cook the rice, so it's got lots of starch in there. So let's plate our risotto on there. So I'm just going to spread that out nicely. You can see how it's like lovely and creamy, not stodgy at all. So there we go. Then we'll take a few of our beetroots. Lovely colours from there, especially where they've been salt baked as well. I'm just going to take some of each colour. Like so. There we go. And then take your pickled fennel. I like to put that where we've got this lovely creamy risotto. We've got that saltiness coming from the, uh, off the goat's weight. Then the vinegariness of the of the pickle that the fennel's been done in, and also that lovely crunch which is on there is really nice. So arrange a nice bit more fennel around there. There we go, and some of that fennel herb. It's quite strong, so just if you like, just have a try of it first, and then use it sparingly around the outside and on the top of the on top of the risotto, so your pieces. Happy with that, lovely. And then let's take a little bit of our cracker and just snap it into some nice shards where you can just have some lovely pieces. There we go. There we go, and a touch of Grapes to finish, and that's just gonna dress those beetroots from the top. There we go, risotto of beetroots and whey uh, with a fennel seed cracker and pickled fennel salad. On to desserts now, and one of my favourites, tart to town of apple. Uh, so, this is all ready for you literally to uh, bake in the oven. So, take the lid off. About 35 minutes in the oven that needs to go. Uh, there you go. And that's going to be served with this lovely caramel sauce uh, and also an apple and Calvados uh, creme diplomat. Uh, so that's just a lovely rich cream uh, flavoured with Calvados and apple as well. So we'll keep those on the side. 
uh, and we'll be back in about 35 minutes to serve up our tata. So my tart to tan has just come out of the oven and it's been in about 35 minutes now, so lovely and golden on the top. Just make sure before you take it out of the oven that it's nice and crisp on the top, nice and caramelised around the edges. Um, if it's not, keep it in the oven for longer because you really want those lovely sticky edges around the outside. Uh, when it comes out, be careful that caramel will be seriously hot in there, so just really be careful with it and let it rest. Just let it kind of calm down in the container for a couple of minutes. That will the caramel will stop bubbling and then when you turn it out, it won't go as much all over. So just have a little slice and then out it comes. And any of that caramel in there, just trickle that over the top as well. And you'll see it's got a piece of um, cassia in there. So cassia like cinnamon, it's just a little bit more spicy, a little bit more fruity. So what I'm gonna do then, is just lift my tatan onto my plate. There we go. And then we've sent you with some more caramel sauce. So give that a little stir. And then just like so. And then have a little spoon of hot water. And take a take your spoon, dip in that hot water, shake it off well, and then your little creme diplomat. I'm just gonna take a little and just serve that just on the side. So tart sound of apple, flavoured with cassia, and a calvados creme diplomat on the side. So little classic dessert here, but I remember making as a very, very young commie. Um, this is a chocolate marquise, done it a little bit differently though. Um, so in the layers, uh, we've got a chocolate sponge going through here, uh, which has got Kahlua going through it. Uh, and I've got two different mousses in here. So we've got a milk chocolate uh, mousse uh, with espresso um, going through, and then also got praline mousse uh, with white chocolate as a base. So most important, make sure this is out of room temperature before you serve it. So just, very, very carefully lift that off of the paper that it comes with and just slide that onto your plate, like so. And then banana puree, so it's a lovely caramelised banana puree that we're sending it with. Nice little bit of that, a little bit wet of that puree so that it can go with the sponge. And then just lastly, we've got this little uh, hazelnut granola for you. Just give it a little break up where it's nice and sticky with the honey that it's been toasted with. And then I'm just gonna put a nice little bit of that. And again, it's gonna cut through nicely with that sponge and the richness of that two different chocolate mousses. So there we go. Nice and simple to plate that one, chocolate marquise, banana puree, and hazelnut granola. For the cheese course, uh, this week on UB Chef, we've got a Roquefort cheese tart. Uh, so this is short crust pastry, uh, really nice Roquefort quiche mixture in the side. That's gonna go in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes, just to heat back up again. Uh, and then the garnishes for that, I've got um, some little uh, poached pear slices for a salad of pear. I've got some walnuts just to shave on the top. Uh, and then we've got pickled walnuts. Uh, we've got a walnut dressing. And we've got a little rocket salsa here as well. Just made almost like the same way as a pesto, but just chopped chopped up the, the rocket. Uh, but no, no cheese in this one. Uh, so we're back in about eight minutes once our tart is ready to plate up. The tart's almost ready to go now, the, the rock for tart. So what I'm gonna do is take my little poached pear slices that I was, uh, sent you. And I'm going to just start to almost like make a little uh, pear board so a, a poached pear and we're just gonna sort of carefully place those slices ready for our tart to sit on so you grab them with your fingers but just be careful because they are pretty delicate there you go it's just been poached in a little light sugar syrup so you should have enough there to make a lovely little base for the, the 
the tart to sit on, like so. And we'll go with one more on there as well. There we go. Okay, so we've got all the, all the pear slices on. Um, then we're gonna get ready to get our tart out of the oven, make sure you've got a uh, spatula. So that onto your board, and then get some of your rockets, little salsa. I'm gonna spoon that just in the center. I'm just gonna spread that around. There we go. Then next, take your walnuts. So I've got this little fine grater just here. Then take your fresh walnuts and just very, very carefully just grate them. You could use just a normal grater if you haven't got one of these fine ones. But it just carves off some lovely little shavings of the walnut just to go on top. There we go. A few more. There we go. Okay, so. Now we've got that one, let's take come back to our actual pickle walnut slices. I'm just going to add three of those just right on the top. There we go. Then take your spatula, lift out your tart, bounce that on top of your pear. And then finally take your walnut dressing, give it a nice stir just to make sure it's not split out during the uh, transit and like so, a little bit of walnut dressing, touch over the top of the tart and some around as well. There we go. So a little bit of a different cheese course view. Rock four, little cheese tart, uh, poached pear and pickled walnuts.